Okay, what I'm going to do about this um, little short video is explain about some of the dereading tables that we talked about from column 6 on the tables 3, 1 to 3, 4 and just explaining how to use this one there. Table 22, which is made reference into as a um, for grouped cables and all that, sometimes comes a little bit confusing to read. So at the moment we're looking at table 22, all right? Um, it says in here and then it closes and all that stuff, all right? Now, if you have a look down here, this gives us a description of where we're talking on the cables. So these are like bunched cables, like we're talking about a continuary. So bunched in air, right? We have this one here, which talks about the number of cables. So one, if I have two cables, the D-rating starts off. So if I have one cable, all the D-ratings are one, except for down here to trunking and touching, okay? But if I've got two cables, we talk about, we have a D-rating here, three cables, four, and all that stuff as we move across. But if we have a look in here, we have bunched in air, bunched on a surface or enclosed, all right? So the description, single layer on wall or floor, touching or spaced, all right? So we're gonna talk about that space in a minute. So if we get into note five, it says here spaced, means a clearance of one cable distance diameter between the cable surface of all adjacent cables, where the cables concerned are not of the same size, the spacing shall be of the based on the largest cable. So what they're saying is, right, that if I have three cables spaced in a bar, I need to have a minimum of one cable clearance distance between the two cables for the D-rating to work. If I have the largest cable, that has to be then the minimum size diameter. But for the D-rating to work, so for example, a third cable here on the third phase, I need to have that spacing of the cable. So the distance between this one and this one, if we were talking about three cables, has to be a minimum of the diameter of the cables that we're talking about. So that's what covers that distance there. So spaced means that we have to have the one distance. So what it is is to allow for heat to get away. So if we have them touching then there's no space distance at all. So what they're giving a minimum requirement is the cable has to be one minimum diameter of the cable. So if I'm going to do that as a dial, I would lay another cable in between. That would be my spacer. And then we would lay that apart. Okay. Um, single layer under wall or ceiling. This one here. So what they're talking about, let's put the idea in your head of a car park with a concrete roof and we lay the cables underneath on the concrete roof of the car park or single layer under a ceiling. So a single ceiling, most people go, oh yeah, but you wouldn't do that in a house, but it might not be in a house. It might be a concrete car park or roof or an underground cellar or something like that because the heat rising up is not going to get away because it's going to be hitting the concrete. Same thing here again. We have touching and we have spaced again for the diameter. So just some simple things to take in air. Bunched in air, bunched on the surface, which could be like all the cables joined together like on a... Um, fake ceiling, if you have a drop ceiling or something like that, all the cables bunched together on that surface. Bunched in there is more about a continuary, all right? Single layer on a wall or floor. Now that can also be if it's enclosed as well. So touching the side of a bit of timber, you might make reference to this. So if it says single layer on wall or floor, the wall could be a piece of timber or, or a um, ceiling joist, okay? When they look at the description in tables three, one to three, four. So take that on board there as well, all right? Okay, so the next one we're going to deal with is 22, or the other one's over on 26, I'll go to. Okay, so these ones, 25, 26, all that stuff here. I've just brought this one down here to show you again. So directly in the ground. So this one marks up pretty simple. All it is is the number of circuits, all right? So this one here, laid in trefoil or touching laid flat. There is a difference. Trefoil, what did we learn about that? is when we have the cables touching in a triangular shape, all right? And laying flat has to be one, two, three, laying flat to each other, okay? So laid flat, touching and trefoil, two circuits, there's a difference between them, 0 0.78 and then laying flat, 0 0.81. Then we get to the distance, 0 0.85, so distance apart, so if the cables are laying 0 0.15, 0 0.3, and then we go through from a meter. So 450 mil, 600 mil, 300 mil. So as they get further apart, all right, the percentage climbs up, which means it's going to get more out of it. 
the more closer they are together, the percentage goes down. All right, so look at the 0.83 as a percentage value. All right, same thing over here. All right, we have touching. Okay, two circuits touching, and then we have them moving apart. As I said, the further they move apart, the higher the percentage rate. So they're pretty straightforward. The only difference between 25.1 and 25.2 is this is for single core conductors like SDIs, and this is for your multi cores like Orange Circular. And the only difference between the two of them. All right, I hope that helps you, and I'll talk soon.